Bernhard predicts that Shabbat movement should be from the descent uh, or civil discourse, or we should be uh, very descent about the protest. We will have to choose a, a very civil uh, types of uh, movement or something like that. Because people are afraid, like some people, the civil societies are afraid that it will go beyond their hand or the, the army league or so-called progressive. The Shabbat movement who are actually waiting and they are inside and let these, all the verdicts come out and then there will be a different phase. So just very quickly, since everyone gave sort of summary comments, I just want to come back to a few facts that were sort of thrown out, and we just need to clear all those as well. Somebody said in the audience, I think, um, you know, majority of the people in Jamaat were not even born in 1971. That's actually true of the entire population. 70% of Bangladesh population was born after 1971. Um, and a large chunk of that was born after 1981. Um, so, because we're talking about war crimes and memory, it's very important to understand that part of the battle that's going on is a battle about memory. Um, and in that situation, not everything is on Shabbat's side either. We haven't talked about evidence or rules of evidence or how to gather them. You know, one of the problems is that we waited this long, a lot of evidence is destroyed, a lot of facts have been overwritten. And that's one of the things that's also going on that we haven't talked about, which is the battles about history are playing out. And the Jamaat, broadly speaking, um, because the top leadership are being tried, also have very powerful weapons to fight these battles. And I think it's very important to talk not just about one side, but about what the opponent is doing, because part of politics is also understanding uh, what the quote unquote other side um, is preparing. Very quickly, three sentences. We must keep the Shabbat movement outside of the facade of belief versus atheism. We have to keep the door open for all people to join us. In front is a long and difficult path. Shaking the country for 10 days is possible. But to change the country takes years. I'm just going to play my one minute right now. Um, and I think that, you know, I think Naim brought out a very important part about the role of Turkey and Saudi Arabia. Let's not uh, forget the fact that the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt also actually has uh, professed its support with regard to the Jamaat Islami and its opposition to the war crimes tribunal. And these things are important because not, none of these events happen without context, right? This is also happening in the broader context of the post 9 11 world. The post 9 11 world, where there has been a lot of sensitivity that has developed, particularly in the West, with regard to how do we now work with Muslims, understand Muslims, interact with Muslims, and if the Jamaat Islami has been extremely powerful and effective in framing the war crimes tribunal as something of a witch hunt um, and has been able to play it in terms of the international audience as such, we can see why one of the reasons, legitimate or not, definitely something which can be offered with regard to debate, but in terms of the fact that why this war crimes tribunal, then there is a question of when there is a large discourse of justice, war crimes uh, accountability that is so popular in the international system, wherever you look with regard to post-conflict countries, this particular war crimes tribunal is not necessarily making any kind of wave, not getting any kind of coverage, and not getting any kind of critical positive. and analytical discussion, as well as some kinds of positive reviews. So that's happening also in the broader context of the post-9-11 world, and we can't forget that for a second. <clears throat> so, uh, thank you everyone, thank you the panelists, thank you for making this evening possible. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, I